So we're now starting Unit 2, Nature's Chemistry. And the first topic is esters, fats and oils. And in this first revision lecture, we're going to concentrate on the esters. The first learning outcome states that you should be able to describe the procedure for making an ester. So hopefully you remember doing this in class. You mix an alcohol with a carboxylic acid and they will react together to give an ester. The reaction is rather slow, so we have to speed it up. So we do that in two ways. Firstly, we add some, a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid, and the H plus ions act as a catalyst for the reaction. And also, we heat it up. Now, because the alcohol and the product, the ester, are both highly flammable, we don't heat it up with a naked flame, so we don't use a Bunsen burner. So we put it into a beaker that has previously been heated up with hot water in it. And that's the safe way to heat up this reaction mixture. Now, the ester that we're trying to make is a very volatile substance. So due to the high temperature being used here, there's a great possibility we'll lose all the ester or it'll evaporate off. So if you remember, we wrapped a condenser around the top of the test tube. Uh, it was just a wet paper towel held together with an elastic band. And the point of that was that as we make our ester, the ester evaporates. Okay? But hopefully when it reaches the cool down part of the test tube, it then condenses back into a liquid and falls back into the reaction mixture. So we cut down in our losses of the ester by having the condenser on the top. Once the reaction is completed, we then pour the reaction mixture into a beaker containing a base. It was sodium hydrogen carbonate. And this neutralizes any unreacted ethanoic acid and the sulfuric acid that we added for the catalyst. And our product, the ester, is immiscible with water, uh, so they form two separate layers. The ester is less dense than the water, so the ester forms a layer on the surface of the aqueous solution. And this allows us then to smell the pleasant smell that's coming off the ester. So chemically, what's happening is so here we have our carboxylic acid and our alcohol. These two molecules join together to give me a bigger molecule, an ester, and it uh, kicks out a small molecule, normally water, in this process. So this is an example of a condensation reaction, and they're quite important in this uh, in Unit 2 of the Higher Chemistry course. We'll also come across them for turning amino acids into proteins. So this is one example of a condensation reaction. So the OH comes off the carboxylic acid, the H comes off the alcohol, and these two molecules join together. And the bit highlighted in red here is known as the ester link. The next learning outcome was that you should be able to name the ester given the reactants or vice versa. An important thing to remember in that respect is that the name of the ester has two parts. The first part comes from the alcohol. So it's ethyl because we used ethanol. And it's propanoate because we used prop propanoic acid. So the first part of the name comes from the alcohol. The second part comes from the carboxylic acid. Right. You should be able to draw a full structural formula and write shortened structural formula for esters. So, if, asked, if you're asked to draw the full structural formula for methyl propanoate, well, methyl comes from methanol, one carbon, propanoate from prop propanoic acid, three carbons, and there's got to be an oxygen in between. So, I'd start by drawing so a one carbon from the methanol then the oxygen, then the three carbons from the propanoic acid. 
because it's a resta, we know we've got to put a C double bond O in on one side of this oxygen, so it either goes there or there. So the C double bond O came from the carboxylic acid, so it'll be on the carboxylic side, acid side of the oxygen, and that was the propanoate. So we put the double bond O in there, and then we put in all the hydrogens to make sure every carbon's got four bonds. Now, you can't just assume that the C double bond O is on the right as opposed to the left hand carbon because we could equally draw this ester the other way around. So if you drew it like that, the C double bond O is on the carboxylic acid side of the oxygen again, which in this case is the left. So. You always have to work out what one's the acid side. You can't just say, oh, it's always on the right or it's always on the left, because that doesn't work. So here's another one, ethyl methanoate. So ethyl, two carbons. Then we need an oxygen on the other side. Methanoate, that's one carbon. Work out where the double bond O goes goes on the acid side, the methanoate, this side, then put on all the hydrogens. And there's the full structural formula for ethyl methanoate. Slightly harder is to draw the shortened structural formula. So the shortened structural formula for this would be, well, the first carbon, got three H's, so it's CH3. Next carbon, two H's, so it's CH2. And then how we deal with this is slightly strange. Do O, O, and then CH. If you look at the shortened structural formula, it kind of looks as if you've got two oxygens joined together there, which in fact you don't. So it's important that you recognize this shortened structural formula as being the way you write out an ester. And remember, the carbon, which has a double bond O, will be the one which the O is right up against the carbon. So that oxygen there is against an H, that O there is against a carbon, so that's where the C double bond O goes. So for example, here's another shortened structural formula for an ester. So let's turn that into a full structural formula. So we've got a carbon with three hydrogens. Okay, then a carbon with two hydrogens. Another carbon with two hydrogens. Then an oxygen. And then this oxygen is right up against that carbon. So this will be the C double bond O. Then a carbon with three hydrogens. Okay. So make sure you can convert between shortened and full structural formula. Right, you should know some uses of esters. Now the uses of esters depend on the physical properties of the ester and what type of bonding you get between the molecules of the esters. Now this C double bond O is fairly polar. The oxygen is far more electronegative than the carbon. So you get a polar molecule. So the intermolecular forces here are going to be PD, PD. Okay. So the intermolecular forces are not as strong as something that's going to have hydrogen bonding, but they're stronger than things that are just London dispersion forces, like simple alkanes. So Let's see how that relates to the uses. Well, the main use is being used as a perfume or flavouring. And these rely on the fact that the ester is quite volatile and so can move from the from your whatever from the perfume you've put on yourself to go into the air and reach people's noses. Uh, and that depends on the strength of intermolecular force. 
if your molecule had hydrogen bonding, all the molecules are held together quite tightly, so they don't, they're not very volatile, so they wouldn't go into the air and spread around the room uh, very quickly. If your molecule had LDF forces, uh, it would evaporate very quickly and wouldn't last a very long time. Whereas the ester with its PDPD, uh, it wouldn't evaporate too quickly, but it will evaporate far more quickly than something with hydrogen bonding, and so it's just suitable for use as a perfume or a flavouring. And it's also used as industrial solvent. It kind of lies in between the totally non-polar solvents and uh, very polar solvents like water. So it would dissolve some things that water is too polar to dissolve. Uh, so a lot of things that won't dissolve in water you'll get to dissolve in the ester because it's just slightly polar. Right, you should be able to explain the process of hydrolysis of esters and predict the products of this. Okay, so we saw this slide before showing how an ester is made by a condensation reaction. Well, going the other direction, breaking down the ester using water to produce the acid and the alcohol is an example of a hydrolysis reaction. And again, we'll come across hydrolysis reactions for uh, breaking down fats and oils, breaking up proteins. So joining the molecules together to make a bigger molecule, condensation, breaking down the molecule to produce smaller ones using water, hydrolysis. And both these reactions are catalyzed by either H plus or OH minus ions. And as we'll talk about in a wee bit more detail when we do equilibrium in unit 3, you in fact get an equilibrium set up and no matter how long you leave a reaction mixture, you have a mixture of both the reactants and the products, but that's not really important within unit 2. So, how do we predict the products of the hydrolysis reaction? Well, it's important you know where the molecule splits when you hydrolyze it. And you split it so that one oxygen goes into one molecule and the other oxygen goes into the other molecule. So we're going to split it there. So our products, well, this leaves us, so two carbons, there's hydrogens, C double bond O, and we're going to have to stick something on there. And over here, one, two, three, four, five, but one, two, four, five. quickly put all the hydrogens in. And we have to do something about these free bonds. So the opposite of the condensation reaction, we put the OH back on there to make a carboxylic acid and the H back here to make uh, the alcohol. So this would be ethanoic acid, two carbons, and this would be pentan one all. Uh, the alcohol. And finally, let's look at another one. So this is methyl propanoate. From, so from the name, you should be able to work out the products would be methanol and propanoic acid. But if it didn't have the name, so you split it there, and that produces that and uh, and that. So we'll put the OH back on the acid and that's going to make propanoic acid and the H back on the alcohol and that will make methanol. So that's the main learning outcomes you should uh, understand for esters.